What? What do you want? I'm busy. I don't care if dinner's ready. I'm busy spending a great deal of time on the internet and therefore becoming much less woke because I'm learning a great deal about reality and the true nature of the world. I know I don't have that many friends in real life, but the fact that all my friends are online is helping me to understand the nature of reality and the nature of the world, which is surely a good thing. No! No, I'm not interested in going out and voting. Democracy is ridiculous. Democracy is a complete waste of time. The fact that I'm spending all this time online is proving to me that democracy is a waste of time, and in the future, we're going to be a dictatorship. No, I'm very busy learning about the true nature of reality and therefore not being woke. I don't want any dinner. So unfair! So unfair! I hate you! I didn't ask to be born! Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of the Jolly Heretic. Now, today I'd like to talk about something interesting that is happening among the young people, that is happening among those uh, that are in, in Generation um, Z, uh, which is that they are becoming, uh, one, uh, much less interested in democracy, much more dictatorial in their tendencies, which implies that in the future, basically, democracy is going to collapse. Uh, and two, that the more time they spend online, the more right wing they become. Which is interesting because it implies that you're spending the more time you spend online, the more time you actually learn about reality. So the internet uh, allow, allows you to learn about reality and stops you being woke, which is presumably why they try to censor the internet. But before we do that, a quick word from our sponsor. All right, before we start, I'd just like to say a word about our sponsor, and that is Atlas VPN. Now, here's the situation, chaps. We are all truth seekers here at the Jolly Heretic Public House. We all want to know the truth about the world, and the only way we can do that is if we get lots of different perspectives, lots of alternative perspectives. And we are in a situation where we cannot get that. The internet is censored, everything is censored, and we literally cannot get uh, the other side with regards to certain important events that are happening in the world because of the way that they censor the internet. So the only thing to do, as far as I'm concerned, is to use a VPN. And Atlas VPN is currently running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-month subscription for just $1.83 a month, plus three months for free, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And so time is running out, so it's 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 worth uh, worth looking into, really. Um, there's lots and lots of uh, benefits to this. Um, not only is that you've got that deal, but you could unlock your favourite content from all over the world, you know, shows from friends or whatever it is you like or using Atlas VPN. You can keep your Google searches private. Uh, you, they make sure that your results aren't tracked and so forth. You can stop ads and malware. It's it's more than just a VPN. It blocks malicious links and ads and, and so forth. And it notifies you when someone's trying to steal your data. Um, and you can save money online. It, it, it notifies you of the best deals. Uh, and it can protect unlimited devices. So it seems to be a jolly good idea. And as I say, they've currently got this campaign where it's just uh, $1.00. 83 a month so you know it's it's worth thinking about one dollar 83 a month for a three-year subscription plus three months for free with a 30-day money-back guarantee time is running out so you know it's certainly worth looking into so as a person that uh, is in favor of the truth and wants as much uh, as, as many different perspectives as possible and is finding these blocked by our current system i think getting a vpn is worth doing and as far as i can see atlas vpn is uh, where it's at chaps OK, we've had the quick word from our sponsor, so back to the video. OK, very interesting study, chaps, that has been published called The Kids Aren't All Right. Uh, the factors, uh, the, the, the kids aren't all right. Uh, the, uh, the four factors driving a, a dangerous detachment from democracy, why young people are attaching from democracy and social norms, and what to do about it by Luke Stanley, Will Tanner, Genevieve Treadwell and James Blagdom, has been published on UK Onward uh, on the 1st of September. Now, of course, they don't really seem to have much of an understanding of what these factors really are. They don't look at it from the genetic perspective. But you know, let's look at what's going on. Young men aged 18 to 34, um, in general, are 28% very conservative, and 18% this is based on a, a large, very large sample, 8,000 people, 28% very conservative, and 18% very liberal, and then other incrementions in, uh, in, uh, in between. If you look at young men um, who spend a further you know, four hours above the average online, then they are 38% very conservative and 17% very liberal. So what this implies is the nature, something about the nature of the internet 
is cause or the nature of the people that use the internet a lot is causing people to become slightly more right wing uh, but also is polarizing them is causing people to become slightly more extreme if you look at gaming again there's a more substantial difference uh, which is that uh, 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 those that spend lots and lots of time gaming 31% very, very conservative, 16% uh, very, very uh, liberal. But the most interesting one is if most of your friends are online. Now, this is an increasing phenomenon among Generation X, of course, which is that you know lots of people online and you, in you spend all your time online. So most of the people that you know and interact with are online rather than in real life, which the young people call IRL because they have to have acronyms for everything like LMAO and all of this stuff. Um, if those people that have most of their friends online, 47% are extremely conservative and 11% are extremely liberal. So what that basically means is that young men who live uh, aged between, as I said, 18 to 34, um, who spend most of their time online are becoming extremely conservative. There is something on the one hand, it seems extremely conservative people perhaps spend a great deal of time online, perhaps because of the psychology of extremely conservative people. Now, the research that we have looked at before on what makes a person very, very conservative, and there's two kinds of ways of interpreting that. One is that they are extremely high in the personality trait conscientiousness, and uh, this might make you rigid and uh, um, and 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 sort of unfriendly and in that sense unable to make friends easily IRL. Two, uh, those that are involved in radical right-wing politics seem to be elevated in psychopathic traits, which might again make it difficult to make friends IRL. But uh, because psychopathology means you are attracted to danger, it means you are attracted to the unusual, it means you are attracted to the unconventional, it means you are attracted to that which offends people, and that in the current world is being extremely right wing. So it could be that that could be the effect. But it seems to me to be more likely if you consider the other the other relationships uh, that, that were found to do with spending time online uh, in general, uh, that what's going on is that being uh, sp spending a massive amount of time online is, is, in a sense, causing people to be more conservative. Now, what would be causing that would, would presumably be that the world is, uh, at any given time, you have to have an ideology which runs the world. You have to have a, uh, a religion, really. Um, and th that will be a, a, that will be lies. That, that, that will involve taboos and it will involve uh, dogmas and whatever. It will be lies. And so online is where uh, you will be able to find people that will contradict those lies, uh, that, that will argue with them. And those will generally be in a right wing, not always, but generally be in a right wing direction. And so what you would expect is that people that spend a massive amount of time online are more likely to be, as it were, sucked into the rabbit hole of truth, um, uh, which is critiquing the current uh, dominant ideology. So that's what that seems to imply, that something about spending a great deal of time on the internet is going to potentially expose you um, uh, uh, to the extent that all of your friends are online, so you're constantly talking to people on the internet rather than talking to people in real life. Um, so you're talking to other people all the time that are spending lots of time on the internet. Um, this is going to precipitate becoming more conservative. So that could be considered to be a, as it, for some people, a white pill. Uh, that young people are spending more and more and more of their time online, particularly young boys are uh, spending more and more of their time gaming, more and more of their time interacting online. And there is some connection between this and becoming um, extremely conservative. And I should state that the way that this survey is carried out is not analysing radical conservatism, you know, being alt-right or whatever, uh, but, but simply conservatism. Remember, there is a distinction between conservatism, uh, which is characterised by being high in all five moral foundations, that is to say, um, uh, uh, obedience to authority, uh, in-group loyalty, sanctity versus disgust, uh, um, and the individualising foundations of equality and harm avoidance, um, and radical conservatism, or, or being all right, which is low, where you are high in those group-oriented foundations, but you are low in the individually-oriented foundations. It's just saying conservatism extreme conservatism as opposed so so that's quite interesting and the second thing that was found was that there is a collapse 
uh, in belief in democracy among young people. So, for example, 33% uh, of these young of these younger people um, could not cope with having um, a, a partner uh, who voted for a different political party from them. And 26% of them could not conceive of being friends with a person who voted from a different for a different political party from them. Now, this is as opposed to people who are over the age of 55, where the same survey found that 20% could not cope with having a, a, a partner that, that voted for a different political party from them. And 11% could not cope with having a friend that voted for a different political party from them. Now, that's quite interesting because when I was at university as a person that's broadly conservative, most young, well, they were the Christian type people, the Christian Union type people. They tended to be conservative. But most other people were Labour, were pro-Labour. Uh, and there was absolutely no problem whatsoever with us being friends. In fact, I must say it never occurred to me that you couldn't you couldn't be friends with somebody just because they supported a different political party from you or just because they were left wing and you were right wing. It's something that simply didn't cross my mind. And I remember when I was in my 30s, a person who for a lot of my life had been my best friend, but had become increasingly woke, saying to me, well, how can we be friends? How can we be friends if you think this? And I couldn't believe it. I thought to myself, well, so what? We have a similar sense of humour. We enjoy various things together. Why does it matter um, if we have different opinions on the nature of science or different opinions on politics? And interestingly, um, when I was a, um, at university and I was a kind of screaming atheist, that was very much the view of fundamentalist Christians. I would object to all their, their, their views and they, would, and they would say, so what? Let's be friends. OK, you don't believe in God. I do believe in God. So what? There's other things we have in common. Why can't we just be friends? Um, and it, it's it's an interesting reflection, I think, of of being of going through a phase of neuroticism, which people do when they're young, uh, or, or in general of high neuroticism, that you can't cope with being friends with people that are different from you. Um, you you see them, you 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 have um, developed a world view whereby you are um, superior in some way uh, because you have these opinions. They make you, you deal with your insecurities and your fundamental feeling of 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 uh, loss and of, 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 of fear of abandonment and of, of, of being crap uh, by, by saying to yourself, oh, well, I'm superior to these other, other everybody else because I'm more moral than them or I'm deeper than them. And so then you hold up this this campaigning uh, ideology of being an extreme atheist or being an extreme, extreme woke or whatever. And these people, uh, they puncture it they make you you have doubts and these people highlight these doubts and therefore make you realize that you may well in fact be um the the uh pain, painful uh, you know uh, uh, unhappy person uh, that you that you really are behind the mask and therefore you react with this sort of cognitive dissonance you react with this strong emotional uh, you know this loathing um of those people because they make you realize what you what you really are so I think that's kind of part of it, but we'll look at that. We'll look at that in um, in a minute. Now, what the report found is that younger people, compared to older people, they have fewer friends, they have lower quality of friendships, so they have fewer close friends, fewer deep friends, fewer friends they can they can rely upon. They are less likely to engage in volunteer work, and they are less likely to contribute to their local community. So they are basically less civic minded. Now, this puts one very much in mind of the paper by in 2007, E Pluribus Unum, by Robert Putnam, where he showed that as a society uh, becomes um, more diverse or what, what, whatever it is, then levels of social trust seem to go down. Uh, levels of social trust go down between communities because they conceive of themselves as separate communities and therefore they don't interact very much with each other. But they also go down within communities because there is a sense in which people uh, will fear that members of their own community will will, will um, collaborate against them with other with members of the other community. And so you start to get very low levels of social trust. You see this at the moment with what's been happening in Leicester. You have these two communities, the Hindus and the Muslims, and they seem to fundamentally distrust each other. 
because they are from separate, um, you know, separate religious communities. And to some extent, they're probably ethnically different as well. Um, and so you get this kind of breakdown where because people don't trust each other, there is basically less of a sense of society. And so you end up with less, with fewer friends because there's just lower social trust. What is friendship about? It's about trust. It's about investing in someone else because you trust they'll invest back, quid pro quo. You, if, you, if you have lower social trust, then you, you simply have fewer friends and you also have fewer deep friends because that involves a great deal of investment and therefore a, a, a great deal of trust. You will be less likely to invest in the community for the same reason, low social trust. What's the point? Well, what, you, you don't trust anybody else. You won't trust that other people will, will pull their weight. So therefore you won't do anything. And so you end up with just fewer networks um, and, and just, just less of a social life. So that's the first thing that would cause this then, would be a breakdown in the nature of society caused by a change in the nature of, of society. The second thing would just be declining intelligence. Uh, declining intelligence. People have low intelligence. Uh, they have, uh, which we know is the case, we have lost uh, something like 15 IQ points between 1880 and the year 2000, and another few IQ points since the year 2000. Now, what that would mean is that levels of social trust would go down. People who are uh, intelligent will be more trusting because they are more able to, uh, they're, more, they're cleverer, so they can perceive better if they are being conned, and so they are less likely to be conned. If you are low in intelligence, you will be more likely likely to be conned and so it's better to trust nobody so the result is that people that have low intelligence don't tend to don't tend to be particularly trusting and so you end up with these atomized isolated communities uh, based around family because you can only trust family if you think about where social where cousin marriage comes from you have societies that have low social trust and so if you have cousin marriage well at least you can trust people that are related to you you can trust people that are closely related to you. They're not because they, they, they are genetically extremely similar to you. So it's in their interest to cooperate with you. They're not going to mess you around. But you can't trust anybody else because they, 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 they're different from you. They're a different family. They, they, could, they, could, they, could, uh, they could mess you around. So it's best only to marry your cousins um, and only marry within the family because then you could, at least you can trust them. You know them. You're genetically very similar to them. You have genetic interests in common. Um, you're, it's not in your interest to mess each other around. And you, ha you have this to a more limited degree now in Western societies. Intelligent people, they're, they're less and less intelligent. They're lower and lower in trust. Also being... Um, Intelligent is associated with altruism. It's associated with empathy. It's associated with being able to conceive of how other people think. Um, well, if you can't do that, if you can't conceive of how other people think, it's more difficult to trust them. So best not to trust them. So you don't trust them. So therefore you end up with the less and less and less social networks and just, just less and less going on and a lower and lower and lower quality of life. Now, this has a clear impact on democracy, because what is democracy? Democracy is basically an optimum level of trust. Uh, if you are too high, in, uh, what do we do in democracy? We hold our leaders to account. If you are too high in trust, if you're very, very pro-social, high trust society, I think this perhaps is true of Finland, actually, in its, in its history, then you don't hold your leaders to account. You just trust them. And therefore, it's, it's a superpower, in, in a way, to be a high-functioning psychopath in a country like Finland, because people will trust that you are genuine. They will trust the, the prime minister, the former prime minister, Matti Vantanen, said many years ago that the, oh, the integrity of politicians should be assumed. That is the most anti-democratic attitude I can think of. Of course, the integrity of politicians should not be assumed. Uh, such that democracy functions, politicians have to be subject to criticism and the, they should be assumed not to be particularly high in integrity so that people criticise them and, and people hold them to account and people can get the best possible leaders. Now, Finland has had this problem historically, as I say, that it has so few psychopaths, it's so high in social trust, it's so high in altruism, and it's also quite high in intelligence, which makes it very high in social trust, that you can get these people like Urho Kekkonen um, uh, 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 and, and so on, who can ascend to positions of power and become dictators um, because nobody will question them because they're so high in social trust. That's one extreme. But the, you have to have a degree of social trust. You have to trust that when the other side wins, 
they're not going to take over the country and kill you or put you in concentration camps or whatever. You have to have this fundamental idea that, that uh, as uh, John McCain argued in the election against Obama in 2008, no, he's not an evil person. He, we are just two people that happen to have certain political disagreements. And you have to have fundamentally believe that the other side, I have to believe that when there's a Labour government, they won't do bad things to conservatives and try to destroy society. They ultimately all have the interests of everybody at heart, but they just have disagreements on what the best thing is to do. And that was very much the view, I think, until perhaps the 1990s, that there, there wasn't this, this polarisation. There was this idea that, yep, that we, we can trust each other. Now, we've seen a collapse in that, and a big part of that clearly uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a collapse in intelligence. And what's been found um, with, the, with this research is that among 65-year-olds, 85% of people fully support democracy. But among those that are 18 to 24, it's only 40%. 40% of people support democracy. Now, it is true that when people are younger, they are lower in conscientiousness, they are lower in agreeableness, and they are lower in, in, in raw intelligence. So as these traits increase, particularly intelligence, you might, across time, as they age, you might expect their support for democracy to increase. But uh, the difference is obviously very extreme. I mean, half. So it seems that the direction of travel is against democracy. Interestingly, 20% of people aged 18 to 24 think that it would be a jolly good idea to basically have a strong man that just sort of takes over the society. And among uh, people that are 65 or, or 55, or 65, or, these numbers are just negligible. So you have a growing belief among young Western people that there should be the kind of society that you had with Saddam Hussein's Iraq or, 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 or something like that. Now, again, the reasons young people are these kinds of the, the new generation is less intelligent. Um, the new generation is also simply more polarized because what the Internet lets you do. And I think this is evident in the, the data we looked at earlier on high Internet usage is it you, ha you have no real friends in real life because of this general collapse. Um, you, you have no civic participation because of the general collapse. You find people online. And what you're going to do is find people that are similar roughly to your innate views. And therefore, your innate views will just become more and more and more extreme as you will become part of a social group uh, either of the left or of the right and as you become part of that social group if you're reasonably intelligent you will conform to that social group and then you will play for status within that social group by signaling your adherence by being slightly more right wing than the last man or slightly more right wing than the left man than the than, than, than the last man the left man. Um, and this will lead to a, 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 a clear effect whereby you become more and more polarised, more and more extreme, and therefore a, a more and more loathing of those on the other side. Now, the only interesting effect that sort of militates against this polarisation is the idea that when people have most of their friends online, uh, then they are very, very right wing indeed. So this implies that the world itself, the normal world, IRL, is left wing. And, and, and there's a sort of secret world behind the scenes that you can become involved in. <clears throat> And if you and that is more right wing because that's the counterculture, um, and and if you're sucked into that, then you become more right wing. So on the one hand we're polarizing, but on the other hand it implies we are also on some level among young people beneath the surface becoming more right wing, and that is consistent with my own observations. I was at the London Conference on Intelligence, so I couldn't believe it that at Durham University, 20 years after I was there, there were secret right wing societies. Now, secret conservative societies, secret uh, HBD societies, if there'd been anything like that when I was there, I'm fairly sure I'd have known about it. Uh, but there, were, there wasn't. There wasn't anything like that because there was less polarisation. There was less of a need to be secret, but we were just less right wing. So society was literally people, students, we were literally less right. wing. We didn't question these things. We didn't question environmentalism. No one questioned it. It was just the truth. Um, it wasn't something you questioned. But this process with the Internet and whatever is um, is and is, is causing people to to question things which they wouldn't have questioned 20 years ago. 
And so although on the surface it is clear movement to the left, no one can deny that. Of course there is. Um, there is something going on beneath the surface. And it seems to be going on particularly among this, uh, this generation, Z, uh, the generation Z. So I think that the, the, what, what, what we're going to... And also the other thing to understand as to why they're like they are, I guess, is because they are confronted with just total chaos. It's absolutely ridiculous. You go to university, you get... A, it was found that going to university in this study that I mentioned earlier is associated with not owning a home. So you, you've, you've been sucked into this bubble, into this Dutch tulip-like bubble of going to university, of, of getting into huge amounts of debt um, in order to get a degree. And then because everyone's got a degree to stand out, you've got to get a master's degree. And then because everyone's got a master's degree to stand out, you've got to get a PhD, which now 4% of these young people are doing. And they're taking out doctoral loans, whatever that is. I mean, in, in my day, I feel so old. In my day, you, you got funding to do a PhD or you didn't do one. If, you, if your research was considered worth doing, then some organisation, the British Academy or something like that, would fund you to do it. Otherwise, it's just a, it's just a vanity project. Um, but no, they have to do these vanity projects because the PhD is the new BA. It's the new b -Sci. And then they find that there's no work for them at all. There's no work. They can't get any work. Um, there, there's this huge overpromotion effect. There's far too many people that, that want to be part that are basically elite. There's, so there's elite overpromotion and there's massive inter-elite conflict, which, which then makes this polarisation even worse because a way that you can ensure positions for yourself is by being extremely left-wing and bringing down everybody else, trying to destroy them so that you get the few elite positions that are there or vice versa. So there's this terrible conflict. So you can see why that, if people are stressed, uh, which they are in uh, and are happy, uh, then they will again be lower in trust and they will again be pushed towards the political extremes. So this period of democracy has been a sort of dream for those that are interested in freedom of speech and freedom of exploration and all this sort of thing. And I think that it's coming to an end and the data on Generation Z is indicative of that. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!